Welcome to the microwave and radar engineering subject lecture 2. After the completion of this lecture, you will be able to identify the transient time effect at high frequencies, discuss the concept of distributive elements, explain the physical significance of transmission lines, and analyze the wave propagation as a function of distance. Let us first discuss the high frequency circuit analysis problem. In this section, we will see the method of analysis for low frequency circuits and from there on examine why these cannot be used for high frequencies. Let us consider a circuit with the source Vs of T and load Rl as shown in the figure 1.1. The connection between them is done by means of two conductor whose resistance is assumed to be very low. At the initial loop of this circuit, we can easily conclude at an instant of time the output voltage V0 of T must be equal to Vs of t and in such cases the wire length L has absolutely no role in determining the output voltage or you can say that this L has very negligible resistance. This approximation however is true only for the low frequencies. For the high frequencies we have the propagation below. So let us discuss the high frequency problem. Let us consider the sine wave source traveling along the length L with a wave velocity V. We all know the sine wave signal which has been shown here in the figure 1.2 which is getting few values at t equal to t naught the value is v1 and at t naught plus tp the value is changed from v1 to v2. Now as the frequency has increased definitely the time period of this sinusoidal wave will also decrease. So the propagation time will come into the action. In this diagram figure 1.1 where the transmission length is L or the distance between the source and the load is L then the propagation time period will be equal to the V by L. V is the velocity of electromagnetic wave that is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and L is the distance between the source and the load. So now we can say that along the length this voltage will be the function of both time t and the position. For example, at the source end, if I consider x equal to 0 and this length is L, then this x will be equal to L at this point at the load end. So it means if I assume x equal to 0 and t equal to t naught, then the voltage is the voltage at the source terminal will be equal to t equal to t naught, the voltage is v1. So I will say the Vs of t will be equal to the v1. Now the load voltage will equal v1. This load voltage will become equal to the V1 only after the propagation time introduced by this length L. So this propagation time is Tp. It means exactly after the time T0 plus Tp, this V0 of T must be equal to the value V1. But at that instant of time, the input voltage Vs of T has now changed to a different value because as we have introduced the time Tp, that is now the time is T0 plus Tp, this value has changed to the value V2. It means at the source end the value is now V2, but at the load end the value is at V1. It means both these voltages V1 and V2 are likely to be different if the frequency is high and their difference is very high for the high frequencies. It means the waves or the wave dimensions now become comparable to the dimension of the circuit components. That's why the voltages are now the different. Hence, we can conclude from here the lumped circuit theorems at low frequencies cannot be directly applied for analyzing our circuits at the high frequencies. So, this is the reason that we make use of the distributed systems and uh, that we will discuss in the transmission line part. So, next we will discuss the transmission lines. We have seen these kinds of wires hanging on these pillars or uh, on these poles. So this is nothing but the physical structures that guide our electromagnetic waves from source to the load or vice versa and these are known as the transmission lines. These transmission lines also include the coaxial cable, a two wire line, a parallel plate or the planar line or a microstrip line or a wire above the connecting plane. So these are all the examples of the transmission lines. Now next the major concern over here is this equivalent circuit of a transmission line. You can see here that we are using resistor R, inductor L, C is the conductance and C is the capacitance to denote the length of the transmission line 
already we have concluded that the lump circuits cannot be used for the high frequencies but we are assuming here this length or the and this part which is being repeated continuously along the whole length of the transmission line it is a very small part or it is of very small distance in which we are using these lump circuits and these parts are continuously repeating along the length so from here we can conclude now the total resistance of this transmission line will be the resistance this r into the distance it means if the length is l over here then this resistance will be r into l or the units will become of uh, units of this resistance will become ohm per meter similarly for the inductance the total inductance will become equal to l in capital l into small l and the units will be henry per meter similarly for the capacitance it is farad per meter and for the conductance it is simi per meter now let's discuss the physical significance of this transmission lines first we have seen here is a resistance now this resistance comes into action because every conducting wire which is uh, consisting of which is making our transmission line is having some conductivity finite conductivity and hence finite resistivity will be there so it will offer some resistance to the flow of the current and there will be ohmic losses in the uh, conductor or in the transmission line so to account for this ohmic losses we have introduced this resistance r second is the conductance the two wire connection is separated by a electric dielectric which may have a parasitic conductance or you can say that some leakage will be there or losses will be there through that dielectric so to account for this dielectric losses we have introduced this conductance third one is the inductance now due to the current flow magnetic fields are generated and these magnetic fields uh, is stored uh, in the conductors to accommodate this magnetic energy inductance uh, l is taken into the account over here and the last one is the capacitance whenever there is a magnetic field there will be electric field and this in the form of the electric field the electric energy will be stored and to accommodate for that electric energy the capacitance c is taken into the action so this is uh, these four are also called as the primary constants of the transmission line and this is the significance of this transmission lines now let us analyze the wave equations for that we will consider a very small section of transmission line a lumped circuit equivalent because we have already seen in the equivalent circuit that this part is repeated continuously all along the length of the transmission line so we are considering a, a lumped circuit and uh, this length is considered here to be very small equal to the delta x such that this input voltage and the output voltage are not going to change much similarly the currents ix and i delta x plus delta x will remain almost the same so we are assuming here that the frequency uh, of operation is f and uh, the angular frequency is omega equal to 2 pi f so if we apply the kirchhoff's voltage law in this input loop we can conclude from here that v of x plus r plus l delta x into i of x is equal to v of x plus delta x or in the other way you can say that this voltage between the point let us assume these points as a and a dash then we can say that v of x plus delta x is equal to the voltage v of x minus the drop across this resistor and the inductor of delta x length so it is minus i of x into r plus g omega l into delta of x rearranging the terms we can get v of x plus delta x minus v of x upon delta x equal to minus i of x into r plus g omega l now taking the limiting case over here as delta x is very very small we can take it almost equal to 0 so applying the limit delta x tends to 0 we can get on the value as v of x plus delta x minus v of x by delta x and this can be reduced according to our mathematical operation as dv by dx and on the right hand side we will get as minus i into r plus g omega l here i of x is simply denoting us that this current is a function of x and similarly v of x is denoting here that voltage is a function of x simultaneously this voltage and currents are also the function of the time but for the simplicity i am considering only here then as the function of x later i will take the case for the function of time or voltages which are changing with respect to time also so now 
we are getting this equation dv by dx equal to minus i into r plus j omega l similarly for the current by, by applying the kcl at this node a we get the equation di by dx equal to minus g plus j omega c into b i have named these equations as 1.1 and 1.2 now we have these two differential equations in two variables v and i now we can solve these equations by taking the second derivative of d square v by dx square so the second derivative will be equal to r plus j omega l into di by dx and the value of dy by dx can be put from here so i can get these equations as d square v by dx square equal to r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c into v similarly taking the second derivative of the i term in this equation over here taking the second derivative of it d square i by dx square will give me this is a constant g plus j omega c and dv by dx so this dv by dx can be taken from over here that is equal to minus i into r plus j omega l so i will get my second equation as d square i by dx square equal to r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c into i i have named this, them as 1.3 and 1.4 now and we will introduce the propagation constant as we all know that propagation constant is denoted by a gamma which is equal to alpha plus j of beta so i am writing here gamma square equal to this gamma that is the propagation constant is equal to r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c so now my equation has now been reduced to this part has been changed with the value gamma square so i am getting here d square v by dx square equal to gamma square v and d square i by dx square equal to gamma square i these 1.5 and 1.6 equations are called as the wave equations now we can further solve these second order differential equations independently and we can get the solution of voltage term as v of x equal to v1 into e to the power minus gamma x plus v2 e to the power plus gamma of x now as i said that i have only considered here the case of the distance but it is also changing this voltage is also changing with respect to the time so this solution can be obtained for the time also by considering a sinusoidal input represented by the e raised to power j omega t as the derivative of the e raised to power j omega t will not change it much it will simply come to the e raised to power j omega t so my value of vx of t this is a function of both time and the distance is equal to v1 e to the power minus gamma x into e to the power j omega t plus v2 to the power plus gamma x into e to the power j omega t so uh, these are almost similar just for the simplicity i have not introduced t term previously and similarly for the current also i will get the value of i x of t equal to i1 e to the power minus gamma x e raised to the power j omega t plus i2 e to the power gamma x into e to the power j omega t by substituting the value of gamma as alpha plus j beta i can rearrange my v of x comma t and i of x of comma t terms as this we are imagine the real term e to the power minus alpha x is taken out and this j terms e to the power j of omega t minus beta x in the first part and in the second part omega t plus beta x are taken separately now next we will discuss the wave propagation as a function of x as we have already derived this equation v of x comma t which is comprising of two parts we will discuss them uh, later what are these two parts and when I consider here attenuation constant alpha equal to zero. This term will be reduced to one. This term will be also reduced to one, and I will be left with only v one e to the power j of omega t minus beta x plus v two e to the power j of omega t plus beta x. And if I take only the first term, that is a forward going wave, that is equal to v one e to the power j of omega t minus beta x, and that this e to the power j omega t minus beta x is again a complex term because e to the power j theta is cos of theta. Plus j sine of theta. So I am going to take here only the real part. So the real part of it will be equal to v one cos of omega t minus beta x. And if I substitute uh, here x for the different values, or the, as I increase the value of x in this equation, I will find that my wave will be propagating in the right side direction. For example, I have assumed here the peak of this wave as point A, and the value of x is x naught. Then I am increasing the value of uh, x. As x one and x one is greater than x naught, then I am finding here that this a has now shifted 
to lord's right hand side and similarly when i have substituted a bit higher value it has shifted more towards the right hand side so it is clearly explaining us that the wave is propagating and this propagation of the wave is depending upon the value of the x as i am increasing the value of this x the wave is propagating in the right side direction similarly if i take this second part and i increase the value of x over here then again i will find that the wave is propagating but instead of right hand side it will propagate towards the left hand side so at the end now we can conclude that we have understood the transient time effect at the high frequencies we have also understand the concept of distributed elements and we have also understood the physical significance of the transmission lines or the primary constants resistor inductor conductance and the capacitance we have also analyzed the wave propagation as a function of distance where the wave equations were derived by us as vx of t and ix of t thank you